Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, we are going to be talking about Hunter Biden today. And uh, for those of you who are new, I suspect we're going to have a lot of new viewers. My name is Mike. I run the Mr. Guns Gear channel here and uh, I am an unapologetic pro Second Amendment supporter in the absolute sense that I think all gun laws are infringements. Um, so that is my perspective on where I'm coming from. And the reason I'm making this video is I made a, or rather I sent a tweet which I don't know are they X's now. I don't know what the right term is for it today, uh, earlier on my Twitter account. And we got a bunch of uh, mixed feedback from folks out there. And I realized that I hadn't actually discussed the Hunter Biden case here on the channel. I've discussed it over on Mug Club before, but haven't discussed it here. So we are going to fix that today. Before we get into the actual details, we do need to thank the channel sponsor, and that is Brownells. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with them. They provide all of the different things that Hunter was charged with possessing here <laughs> uh, today. So not only firearms, but accessories, ammunition, uh, optics, gunsmithing supplies, all of those things are available over at Brownells. So with that, let's let this helicopter go by and then get into the details of this case. So before we can get into the guilty verdict, we do need to talk about what he was actually charged with. He was charged with three specific crimes related to this case. Um, whether or not he's charged with other crimes related to other criminal activity he's done, we will see in the future. I highly doubt it. Um, but in this case, he was charged with lying to a federal gun dealer or a FFL, um, making false claim, making a false claim rather on a 4473. We will get into that here in detail in just a second. And then unlawful possession of a firearm. And that was by a prohibited person. Obviously, he was uh, in possession of that firearm, allegedly, according to the case for 11 days. Um, so let's talk about the 4473 first. So for folks who don't know, uh, the 4473 is a relatively new form, uh, which is one of the reasons I do think it is an unconstitutional standard. Um, the 4473 and background checks have not been required uh, until the 90s. So the vast majority of the history of the United States of America, there was no 4473, there was no background check, there was no NICS check or FBI check, depending on the actual state that you live in. Um, so I do contend that this form should be completely thrown out and that anyone who's found guilty of lying on it, their case should be overturned. We will talk about that. There is a case that is potentially going to be heard by the Supreme Court this year uh, that already talks about that. And Hunter's case absolutely could be impacted by it. So the actual 4473... 4473 rather, uh, the actual question it has asked has changed over the years, but the current form right here I have on my screen and I should be rolling in for you guys. It says, are you an awful user or addicted to marijuana or any depressant stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance. And then it has a specific warning there for marijuana. And I believe most of that is due to all the different state laws. Uh, this is obviously a federal form, and I think they're trying to uh, draw the users into realizing that although marijuana may be legal in many states, um, at the state level, it is absolutely still a controlled substance at the federal level. And then the wording there is very important. So an unlawful user addicted to, etc. cetera. Um, so it goes on there and Hunter's defense team was essentially making the case that at the time he filled this form out, he was not actually uh, using drugs and was not addicted to drugs. However, uh, the thing that I think got him convicted, unfortunately, was the day after filling out this 4473, he actually sent a text to his uh, brother's um, widow, who was also his girlfriend at the time, uh, stating that he was texting with Mookie and was getting some crack and smoking crack behind a 7-Eleven. So that established a timeline. Uh, if that was not the case, I think Hunter would have had a pretty good chance of actually not being convicted of that count there of making a false claim on a 4473 because the actual standard for um, addicted to um, or user of any other controlled substance is a gray area and has actually never been defined under federal law. Uh, when this form, well, there was, I should state better yet, there was a period when this form uh, was written in a way that many people believed that if you were a quote unquote alcoholic, you could not uh, purchase a firearm. And that's why the wording on the form has changed over the years to kind of avoid that. Um, because there is, if you look at the history of the United States, uh, we have to look at the Bruin decision. So for folks who are not familiar with that, that was a year or two ago now at this point. And what the Bruin decision established was that any law that is not consistent with the text, history, and tradition of the Second Amendment as it was written in 1791, or adopted I should say, um, it is therefore unconstitutional. So if you look at this form here, uh, there really is nothing at all uh, consistent with the Second Amendment as it was written um, and adopted that 
would prohibit someone who was a user of crack in this specific instance um, from owning a firearm. So if you look back at those times, there are some laws that sort of are applicable. Uh, some cities, some states have laws that said if you were drunk, like actively drunk, um, then you could have your firearm removed from you. But then as soon as you sobered up like the next day, they would hand you your firearm back. So that is about the most prohibitive law that might be constitutional. On my social media posts earlier today, many people were commenting that if they were just found guilty of these crimes, they would be sitting in jail awaiting sentencing. And I just kind of want to dissect that perspective a little bit. I would say that that's probably not true. And the reason for that is most people who lie on 4473s are never even investigated for the crime, let alone charged with a crime, let alone prosecuted for a crime. So just some statistics on that real quick. Uh, basically, we have a couple different years, the data for that. So in 2017, out of all of the NICS background checks that were done, only 12,700 uh, denials were sent to field offices for investigations. So uh, I, I believe in that particular year, there was just under 400,000 denials and only 12,700 of them were even sent to the local field offices for investigations. Of that, only 12, 12 out of the 400,000 denials were prosecuted. Now, pretty much all of those denials violated some sort of law, depending on the actual three that we we're talking about here that Hunter was charged with. At least one of them, generally speaking, at least two of them were violated in those 400,000, but only 12 were prosecuted in that year. Uh, additionally, depending on the study that you actually cite, up to 20 million American gun owners use drugs in a way that would make them a prohibited person. However, they are very rarely prosecuted unless it is part of a bigger case. So typically speaking, when you see that, you see like uh, uh, smuggling of drugs or something like that. Someone's caught with a gun. It just so happens that their girlfriend filled out the 4473 and lied. That generally speaking is when you see those rare cases where people are actually prosecuted for these crimes. It tends to be as part of a bigger investigation, sort of a add on charge, almost never are people charged specifically with lying on the 4473. A related camp that I think a lot of the comments on my earlier post uh, kind of fell into was the camp of folks who said, I don't believe this law is constitutional. I don't think it should exist. However, if I violated this law, I would be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And I think we kind of touched on that. That's really not the case. However, Hunter Biden is a special case because of two different things. Obviously, he is the president's son. He's the first president's son to be convicted while the president was in office in the history of the United States. However, however, it may not be a political prosecution in the way that you're thinking. If you just heard that statement, Hunter Biden also wrote a biography and narrated it in his own voice where he admitted to using crack cocaine up to 15 times a day um, during the period that he purchased this firearm. And he wrote the book and narrated it in his own voice, providing the prosecution ammunition that they could use in a case against them, again, during the statute of limitations before those expired. So while he is sort of a special case because he's the president's son, he's also a special case because he made such a high profile example flaunting the actual law itself and essentially challenging any prosecutor in the country to charge him with these crimes. And obviously he was charged and has now been convicted. And with all the background out of the way, what is going to happen going forward? Well, of course, his legal team, I'm sure, is going to appeal this case. The judge in the case did say that sentencing would come down within 120 days. Now, typically for these charges, again, you'll hear in the media that he's facing up to 25 years in jail, and that's absolutely true. However, uh, from a legal perspective, not in terms of what we know he's done, but in terms of what he's been convicted of. Historically, Hunter Biden is a 50-something-year-old man with no criminal history and is a nonviolent offender. So in most cases like that, um, the highest you would ever see someone sentenced to, uh, although these are felonies, is about two years in jail. However, the norm, if you will, for someone convicted under these crimes is absolutely no jail time in some sort of either community service, uh, some sort of probation, something like that. So that is the norm. What do I think will happen? Well, a couple things. Obviously, like I said, his team will appeal it and that process will go on. He will likely not be in jail at any point during that appeals process. Additionally, um, there is a case right now that is uh, up for Supreme Court uh, acceptance, if you will. So it has gone through all the local levels. It has gone through the uh, federal district levels. And that case is U.S. versus Daniels. And in that particular case, Mr. Daniels is challenging the federal government's ability to deny someone the firearm, a firearm rather, or ownership of a firearm because of 
marijuana use in that particular case. However, his case and the way it is being appealed is going to challenge all of the items that are in that, I believe it's section F of the 4473. Um, so if the Supreme Court takes that case, which they haven't agreed to yet, but they're still in the process for year 2024 of taking new cases. So if they do take his case, um, and they actually apply the Bruin standard to it. Again, the text, history, and tradition uh, of the Second Amendment as it was written in 1791. I believe Mr. Daniels will win that case, and then I believe all of the lower court challenges that are in line with that will be thrown out. One of those lower court challenges, by the time that case is heard, if it is heard, will be Hunter Biden's case. So very likely, Hunter Biden's case will be thrown out again. But there's a lot of steps to go to Go, get to rather uh, before we get to that point, but that is the logical progression of this case as it goes forward. Likely it will be pending appeal at various different levels. And then again, if we apply Bruin correctly, uh, this case will be thrown out. And hopefully, hopefully, my hope is that all 4473s will be thrown out. The background check process will be thrown out completely um, because. Uh, many of you guys know this, but a lot of the new folks may not know. Those 4473 forms are the forms that the ATF uses uh, to administer a uh, unconstitutional database of firearms ownership. They're prohibited in law from doing so. We have videos on this, you guys can check it out, but they're prohibited by law from doing so. However, they do uh, maintain that actual database. And if you don't believe me, then just kind of do a quick Google search of how guns are traced that are used in crimes. Uh, they absolutely have a database of all the federal users who have filled out that 4473 and they keep them on hand. They claim it's not searchable. However, they're able to trace guns within a couple days. So it seems that, in my opinion anyway, that seems quite searchable. So that's enough ranting for me. We're gonna close the video out there. If you guys have any questions about this case, anything else that we talk about here on the channel, you can always post those questions down below in the comments section. You can also post those over at my various social media pages. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, that is where we sort of break news and then we break down full videos here as needed, as we did today. And uh, if you guys are subscribed, thank you. If you're new here and you're not subscribed, you can hit that button. Additionally, if you are subscribed, you can, uh, and you're not seeing rather two to four videos a week here on the channel, you can sign up for the email list at the website here on your screen. This email goes out once a month and it has all the videos since the previous month's email went out. So that way it just goes straight from my inbox, art box rather, to your inbox. It's and there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes for my content. Additionally, we have a daily deals email. So if there's any of the cool stuff that Hunter Biden had, whether it be ammo, uh, guns like the Colt Cobra 38 special, revolver, uh, optics, uh, magazines, etc. If any of those things go on sale, we will send it out in the daily deals email. If the item is in the email on that particular day, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet because I've already done the price comparisons for you. So that way, hopefully it saves you, saves you rather some time and saves you some money. And with that, we'll close it out. Look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.